Hi students, Professor Nugent here. In this video, we're going to continue our discussion of models that help us estimate regressions when the dependent variable is binary. And when we mean binary, that means that the dependent variable has two possible outcomes. They're labeled 0 and 1. And the regression models the probability that the dependent variable y equals 1. In this video, we are focusing on logit. And the logit regression, like the other two models we've looked at, models the probability that y equals 1 given x. And in this case, the logit regression uses the cumulative standard logistic distribution function, whereas probit uses the cumulative standard normal distribution function. And in both cases, the function is evaluated at z equals beta naught plus beta 1 times x. So we have that the probability that y equals 1 given x is equal to the cumulative standard logistic distribution function of beta naught plus beta 1 times x. And what is this cumulative logistic distribution function? It's this thing. It's 1 over 1 plus e to the power of negative beta naught plus beta 1 times x. Because the logit and probit regressions use different probability functions, the coefficients, or the betas, are going to be different for logit and probit. Let's look at an example. Suppose that beta naught, or the coefficient on the constant regressor, is negative 3. Suppose that beta 1 is 2 and x is 0.4. So beta naught plus beta 1 times x is negative 3 plus 2 times 0.4, which gives you a value for z of negative 2.2. So we plug in z equals negative 2.2 into the logit function. So the probability that y equals 1, given that x equals 0.4, is equal to 1 over 1 plus e to the negative of negative 2.2. And that probability is 0 0.0998 or 9.98%. Now you can ask, why bother with logit? if we have probit. The main reason is historical. Logit is computationally faster and easier, but that doesn't matter when we have powerful computers at our hands. In practice, logit and probit are very similar since empirical results typically don't hinge on the logit or probit choice both tend to be used in practice. Let's look at the example that we have been studying, the Home Mortgage Disclosure Act data. The function that we're going to run, the commands that we're going to run is logit, then we write our y variable, x1, x2 and we've written comma row plus. So logit is the command to run a logit regression followed by the y variable, the x1, the x2, where y is a binary dependent variable equals 1 if mortgage denied and zero otherwise. Okay, so y can only take two values. 
we run this regression in Stata and we get the following coefficients 5.37 on the payment to income ratio, 1.27 on black, negative 4.12 on constant. We interpret the p-values in the same way as we would the z statistics, the robust standard errors. We'll talk about why we have z statistics and the chi-square in a as well as a pseudo r squared a little bit later let's focus on interpreting the coefficients so the positive coefficients mean that an increase in this variable increases the probability of denial now let's carry out a quantitative interpretation of the coefficient we want to display so DIS this is the shorthand command for display and then we have some text predicted probability comma for payments income ratio at 0.3 comma white and then we use displays calculator function 1 over in parentheses 1 plus exp open parentheses negative and then we call on the regression results the coefficient estimates underscore beta of the constant so the coefficient on the constant regressor plus the coefficient on the payment to income ratio times 0.3 so we've plugged in the value of 0.3 for the payment to income ratio and the coefficient on black times zero because we're looking at the predicted probability for a white applicant given that they have a payment to income ratio of 0.3 using the displays calculating function and we calculate a probability of 0.0748 So the logit predicted probability is about 7.48% and we observe that the probit predicted probability is about 7.5% So these predictions are quite close. Let's look at a plot of the predictions the predicted probabilities from the probit and logit models are very close in these home mortgage disclosure act regressions you can see that the probit model is just a little bit higher for the smaller values of the payment to income ratio where it lies just above the probit model they're quite close in this domain of the payment to income ratio and then probit seems to lie just above logit over here again but they're really quite close very very uh, closely connected in their predictions that a, an applicant will be denied in the next video we are going to discuss estimation and inference in the logit and public models and followed by that we will look at uh, statistics of or measures of fit so stay tuned